doctors are calling for better protection as they treat patients with coronavirus. Yeah, according to some NHS workers, personal protective equipment has been inadequate, putting frontline staff and patients at risk. Joining us now is the co-founder of the Doctors' Association UK, Dr Samantha bat -Rawden, who is currently uh, self-isolating. Uh, a very good morning to you. Um, how, well, how are you doing and what has your experience been uh, of being on the front line? Uh, we're good, thank you. We're currently self-isolating because my little one is poorly. Um, he's two and he has chronic lung disease um, and nearly ended up in hospital a couple of days ago. But I'm glad to say he's better and running around the house and uh, causing mayhem. Mm, um, <laughs> in terms of uh, our experience uh, on, on the front line, um, the Doctors' Association UK has been absolutely inundated with messages, emails, calls, from NHS doctors who are really concerned that they don't have access to a personal protective equipment or, or protective gear. Um, the issue seemed to be that we just don't have enough. Um, some GP surgeries haven't even received it yet. Um, some trust or GP surgeries that did initially receive it have now run out. Um, and some places, uh, GPs and intensive care units have received PPE, which has already expired with another label over the top with a new date. Um, so there, there is a problem with, um, with protective gear at, at, at the moment. I mean, do you think, Doctor, that, that actually we, we should have been better prepared, that these, th th this equipment should have been there in the likelihood, very rare likelihood, that we'll be in this situation? Or do you have some sympathy that actually there are some eventualities, there are some situations that you simply cannot prepare for? Um, I think maybe we could have learned lessons um, from previous pandemics that we've had. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and unfortunately we haven't, and that's now put frontline uh, workers at risk. I think, however, this is unprecedented. Everyone's doing the, the best that they possibly can. I think what's, what's disappointing for doctors and, and frontline NHS staff is that NHS England has actually said our, uh, our national supply of personal protective equipment or protective gear is actually adequate. Uh, and they are saying that this is a, a local issue, a distribution issue. Um, which seems to be passing the buck a little bit. Mm. Ultimately, we've got NHS staff who are not adequately protected, who are putting themselves, you know, their, their family members and ultimately patients at risk. And can I just ask you, um, are you, uh, with, when you talk to your colleagues, um, how, what is the morale like? I mean, you're all at the beginning of this in many ways. Um, you know, the, the influx is not quite at the level that people are fearful of. Um, are you worried for the health of your colleagues who are going to have to work round the clock and in shifts and cover for other people who, like you, are now in isolation? You can't work in a hospital. Somebody else is having to do what you would have done. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, actually, I think morale at the moment is pretty good. Um, I think everyone's realised that this is a, you know, this is a national emergency. This is a pandemic. Um, everyone is mucking in. Everyone's giving 300%. There's almost a, uh, a wartime spirit, I think, going on in the medical profession at the moment. Um, having said that, doctors are working way over their hours and, you know, we, all, we already do very long hours. Uh, rotors have changed, uh, so people are working much more. And some people are, are even staying away from home, um, mm. particularly if they have vulnerable children um, or elderly parents that live with them. They've actually taken the decision um, to live away from their families at this really stressful time. So although morale is good at the moment, I, you know, I, I, I do worry that we are all going to get burnt out from, mm. from working so hard. I, we, um, we, I, I should just add at this point, we have had a response actually from uh, Public Health England, uh, and I should read this out, a statement from Public Health England says, the guidance is about ensuring that the right tools are available at the right time as the outbreak progresses and that the correct PPE is used for patient care to ensure the safety of healthcare workers. Uh, FFP3 masks, and Doctor can explain what they are in a minute, are only needed for specific situations, and we have updated the guidance to reflect this. Uh, what are those masks? Are, are those very specific masks that, that, that perhaps we aren't, aren't available readily on the streets? These are just available in hospitals, are they? 
Um, so yes, they're special masks. Um, they are fitted to a, a staff member's nose and mouth. Uh, you then get tested on those masks with aerosols to make sure that the um, the worker is fully protective. These are the ones that you would have seen um, doctors and, and other staff wearing in China and Italy and elsewhere. Um, so yes, they are the most protective masks. Mm. Um, Public Health England at the moment, as you as you just read out, have said those only need to be worn by intensive care doctors or doctors doing the high risk procedures, the aerosol generating procedures. But, you know, even even then, um, we don't seem to, to have enough of that either. And, and just going back to your point about, you know, worrying about colleagues, um, I've been speaking to intensivists uh, from Italy who have had to look after their own colleagues and mm. ventilate their own colleagues yeah, and I, they've lost people. Yeah, I can imagine. And, and also, I was going to ask, the, the psychological effect on, on the NHS staff on the front line as well must be, you know, for, for lots of them, you know, not been in this situation before, unprecedented, that must be a real concern as well in hospitals up and down the country. Yes, it definitely is. Um, we're all trying to keep our spirits up, but you know, everyone's worried. Um, we're, we're worried about our patients. We're worried that we're not going to have enough intensive care capacity, uh, and we're and we're worried for our own families as well. Um, sooner or later, some one of us is going to get critically unwell. Um, we know that's going to happen. It's it's happened in China. It's happened in Italy. It's happened in the U.S. and Canada. And you know, we're, we're preparing for that. Um, but, you know, none of us are shirking our GC. All of us are giving 300%. Absolutely nobody is walking away from the front line. Yep. You know, this is, this is what we've trained for. Just a very quick question. Uh, you're at home now self-isolating because your, your younger two-year-old isn't well. However, it, provided you could find some care, if you could be tested you could be back working in the hospital. Have you heard anything? We heard last night, we heard in the, in the briefing from Boris Johnson uh, and his medical team that there are going to be more tests and they're going to prioritise health workers. Have you heard anything? Has anybody turned around to you and said, look, we think we can get a test to you in the next couple of days or you can come in and take a test? Um, so, yes, so the government announced yesterday and we were made aware at the Doctors' Association UK that testing was ramping up. Um, this is really good news, but we don't know how much of this or indeed any of this is going to be allocated to frontline staff. Um, as you quite rightly said, um, I'm self-isolating at the moment for 14 days. Um, obviously, I'd, I'd you know, like to be with my little one when he's unwell, but now um, I just I really want to be back on the front line, yeah. and I can't do so um, without a test. Yeah. I can't see that I'm going to be offered one um, within the next couple of weeks. I don't know when frontline staff are going to be offered one, but... We, uh, we're currently running a survey uh, of doctors um, and I think about 800 have replied overnight and a third of them, so about 33%, are currently having to self-isolate because they've got a, a household member who's unwell. Now, to me, that's... You know, that's that's a waste of energy if they don't need to be off. And yeah. um, we would know that if Absolutely. there was testing. And I think that that has got to be the next very urgent matter for the government, hasn't it? Um, thank you so much. Stay in touch uh, with us. And I'm so glad to hear that your little boy is back on his feet.